to everybody on this mini meditation retreat. Uh, when I called Father, he was in prayer and then he thought about how to structure this. So this, uh, I think, has divine blessings for us all. Thank you, Father, for thinking so much before you do this. So I want to introduce Father Joe by a story. He, uh, we met him many decades ago and he has been with the Piramal family, uh, just helping us through yoga, meditation, and his spirituality. And one day he uh, brought a very interesting visitor to my clinic, little clinic, and uh, that was Mother Teresa. And she came with him to the clinic and then she planted a tree and she saw the children who were handicapped at the clinic and she wrote a very beautiful thing about keeping the joy of serving and always sharing that joy with other people. And so that's what we've been trying to do for many years. But after she came to the clinic, father said, let's go to Vasai where Mother Teresa wants to inaugurate a new center. And so we all piled into the car. Ajay was driving and I was sitting next to him and my sister-in-law also, Father Joe, and Mother Teresa and her nuns. And on the way, there was a big, huge traffic jam. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we weren't going to get there in time. We were already late. And uh, then Mother Teresa said, let's pray. And I, I thought to myself, how on earth with this long line of trucks in, in, in front of us, <laughs> is prayer going to help us get there? And within minutes, all those trucks parted and we could go straight to the Vasai Center and be there on time. So I think Mother has given us an amazing idea of prayer and service and she actually could prove it. And Father Joe was the one who was with us when this, uh, I think it was a miracle because it was thousands of trucks in front of us. So uh, Father has been uh, our guide to this divinity, this beauty of meditation and yoga through his guru, BKS Iyengar. For many years, BKS Iyengar had a center at the Piramal Hospital. And he used to come and he used to delegate all the work to all his senior disciples. And Father Joe is one of the senior disciples of Guruji. And so it's a great pleasure, Father. Thank you. Uh, I know that you have been doing yoga in 70 countries. And even in China, you said that your meditation has gone viral, just showing that people need it everywhere in the world. And uh, we thought, uh, why not have this wonderful resource in right here in Mumbai and uh, to speak to us for these eight days while we um, ease the lockdown. And I think the problems will be bigger uh, as, as the lockdown eases and we will need every bit of resilience, hope and strength which Father gives us. Father Joe, very warm welcome to you this morning. Thank you, Dr. Swati and Ajay. This is uh, 34 years of uh, practicing with Ajay and you in the early morning hours, as and when you were in Bombay and I was in Bombay. And uh, so it's so generous of you to offer this to your friends all over. I have called also some of my long time practitioners, anger yogis, and uh, welcome. We have to always begin with the invocation. And the invocation that we do is, uh, the Om. Om, as Vivekananda said, is the first vowel and the first consonant. In uh, Christianity, in the teachings of St. John, in the uh, Apocalypse, he talks about God being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so, combination of Alpha and Omega is also Om. And we chant that three times, and then I acknowledge the wisdom of yoga that originated with Patanjali, culminated in, in Guruji BKS Iyengar. And so I'll do that invocation also. Those of you who are familiar with that can join me. <clears throat> Om.
ಮುಖೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚಾಂ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯೋಪಾಕರೋತ್ತ ಪ್ರಬರ ಮುನೀನ ಪಾತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನತೌಸ್ಮಿ ಆಬಾಹು ಪುರುಷಾಕಾರ ಶಂಖಚಕ್ರಸಿ ಧಾರಿಣ ಸಹಸ್ರಶೀರ್ಷ ಶ್ವೇತ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಪಾತಂಜಲಿ ಹರಿಯೋ Let's bow our heads to the God of our understanding in Jalandhar Abandha. And then drop our hands if you have folded them on the, at the sternum, drop your hands down open, and open your eyes and sit in a comfortable position. My first part today on the first day is to uh, not give a rational because you know, uh, too many people have talked about meditation there's a lot of preaching and teaching but very little of practice so i want to share with you in the simplicity of ayengar and mother treva you know i always tell people that my the god of my understanding is my uh, supreme yogi jesus why because i have uh, the the three nadis the ida pingala and sushumna my ida and pingala is uh, guruji bikes ayengar and mother treva and uh, shushumna nadi is the god of my understanding jesus supreme yogi and so uh, he was very very much uh, for it he in fact edited my my article on good friday on the supreme yogi one day and uh, so but what is the common denomination between mother priza and and ayengar that is so so important in this seminar that ayengar taught yoga with a heart he and mother treza shared a common denominator that is compassion mother treza taught us to go to the forest of the poor guruji bks ayengar taught me to go to the forest of the poor in health and that's why today when we are going to do this program uh, we are going to be very conscious of wholeness that leads to holiness now uh, so before i give you all this explanation for a very short while because first i'm going to give you this brief introduction even for this introduction please lie down or sit because i don't want anyone to feel in any kind of stressful position so feel comfortable because we are going to do some kind of uh, restorative uh, work also with the help of uh, guruji's proverbial uh, bolster that was his first uh, first prop so take a comfortable position lie down sit down do whatever you want to do with with regard to your body but don't be stressed if you want to sit down you are most welcome to sit down why do i set this eight day workshop in a context of uh, ayengar because uh, i don't know whether you are aware that scientists all over the world have today acknowledged yoga and uh, it's the harvard medical school uh, harvard benson who first came in response to walter cannon's description of stress what a stress stress is fight and flight response harvard benson came to india to seek an answer he found it and uh, not with dhirendra uh, brahmachari he was disillusioned so he went to the dharmasala and he got this first book it in called the relaxation response not satisfied came again and did some more work and he produced a second book which is beyond relaxation response which we bring in in the antaratma sadhana this is what uh, that's why i want to connect you know this practice is measurable it is uh, it's it's very very it's acknowledged by by scientists starting with uh, dr swati herself see me doing it on on uh, uh, on ajay she could see the the difference and even you know uh, meditation is a essential component of yoga but unfortunately yoga has got transported trans has gone away gone ab- abroad leaving aside the antaratma 
Bahiranga, Antaranga, and Antaratma have to be one. It's Ashtang. People say in the East, you know, that when a wise man points the finger to the moon, the fool gets preoccupied with the finger. And Bahiranga sadhana is a finger. Guruji always said that every asana has to become a prayer. Scientists today know that it is a journey that has to start from the periphery to the center, from the, cent from the sympathetic nervous system to the central nervous system. How? Antaranga, autonomic work. It's a lot of pranayama. And therefore, we are going to integrate all this in a very tangible way. Because at the end of the whole work, if my pulse beat shows some difference, it's really, uh, it, is, it is something that you will be uh, able to, to feel good about. It's not just uh, imagination, but it's actually recordable. You know, the, my Supreme Yogi said, by their fruits, you shall know them. If people are meditating, then they should be very loving and kind. If that is not there, if arrogance is still there, then the essential component of Ishwara Pranidhana is not taken place. Shaucha Santosha Tapasa Swadhyaya Ishwara Pranidhana There where the whole trick of this meditation program is. In everything that I'm doing, which is the locus of control? If it is the ego, I'm doing rajasik, jumping like a monkey is not yoga. Can I bring into my asana that component which Guruji so beautifully integrates that you work through the breath into the innermost core of your being where you encounter through dharana, dhyana and samadhi, you encounter what we call the antaryamin. Yama is to control, antar is inner, inner controller, the God of your understanding. And that is why in today's first day program, we are going to look at what does Herbert Benson find in yoga? You know, he, after writing the second book of uh, Beyond Relaxation Response, he again came and he saw that with yoga, you have an infinite, the plasticity of the brain, you know, and he wrote uh, the, 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 a third book that was uh, on, on this plasticity of the brain. That, uh, and then finally he wrote a book which is uh, called uh, The Healing, Quantum, he not Quantum, but uh, uh, Healing, On Healing. And now he has come out with a book called The Breakout Principle. What is The Breakout Principle? That is the core of our meditation, the uh, nitric oxide effect. So it's not just imaginary. Two Swedish scientists today have affirmed pranayam and a very special pr pr kind of pranayam. I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do it during the eight days. I'm going to integrate that pranayam also. It's a Brahmari pranayam, which increases the nitric oxide 19 fold. So uh, get ready to experience uh, this. And uh, so as we begin, uh, we are going to first ask you to lie down. Now, those who are in bed, those who cannot really uh, lie down on the floor, many people can't even lie down on the floor. You can use a bed, you can, but if you are lying down on the floor, uh, see that you have also a bolster. It's, it's good to have a bolster. And uh, I will show you how this bolster has to be uh, kept and how you have to lie on it. If you don't have a brick, uh, you can have uh, a pillow. This serves as a pillow. You sit in front of the, you sit in front of the bolster, vertical bolster, you lie down and you keep the brick for your head. If you are not able to do this, don't worry. Just take any position of lying down on the floor. If you can support your diaphragm with the bolster, it is tremendously beneficial for your breathing. 
We're going to stay in this. We're going to stay in this posture for three complete minutes. Now, those who are doing the bolster will have to adjust two areas of the body. One is the pelvic rim, so you may have to bend your knees and allow the sacrum to spontaneously slide down. And then you can stretch your legs one by one. Then you have to also work towards the sternum. And to open up the sternum, you have to push your deltoids down. That means your shoulders should go down. And as you push your shoulders down, interestingly, your, par your arms will move away from the body. The triceps moving towards the floor. The biceps opening up towards the ceiling. And then the frontal brain easily looks down. It's very important that you bring, as in the words of Guruji, the energy of the intelligence has to drop in the heart. And that takes place in a bandha that is called Jalandhara Bandha. Simple because it is already God given, but never understood. When you do Iyengar Yoga, you realize that there are three areas of blending the double energy of the spine, Kundalini, with the energy of the intelligence. Kundalini, the energy of the spine is made to rise. Energy of the intelligence is made to drop. Both meet in the heart. Now, how of this will be to learn the bandhas, which I will teach you as we go on in the program. Today, you just learn how do you rest. As a result of this diaphragm-supported bolster used for the, to rest your trunk on, as a result of it, your breath automatically will get slow. Without any effort, once again, the common denominator of anger with Mother Teresa is, she said, don't do too many things, but whatever you do little, do it with love. And the same with Guruji, don't do multiple things, but whatever you are doing, do it with attention. For Guruji, attention was love. So he helped us to go into the innermost recesses of our being to awaken the wisdom in the body that Walter Cannon talks about. Now, the second posture I want to share with you is this is earlier one what we did address our respiratory system. But we know that we have a second heart. And cardiologists tell us to go for walks because that second heart, which is the calves, get activated and the heart also gets. So we request you to lie on the floor in such a manner, keep some support for your head. I'm, I'm demonstrating it. Anything that resembles a chair to rest your calf muscles. This is a very important uh, posture because 
योग हैज टू ब्रिंग अबाउट मेजरेबिलिटी ऑफ हाइपो मेटाबॉलिक कंडीशनिंग दैट इज वेर स्लो डाउन द ब्रेथ नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू स्लो डाउन द हार्ट रेट एंड इवेंचुअली इन मेडिटेशन वी विल ऑल्सो ब्रिंग अबाउट द स्लोइंग डाउन ऑफ द ब्रेन रेट एट लीस्ट टूडे ऑन द फर्स्ट डे दैट इज एट लीस्ट ट्राई टू एक्सपीरियंस वॉट इज द आल्फा कंडीशन you know as people meditate but they don't really switch completely the the thinking brain chitta vritti nirodha so what is chitta vritti nirodha guru ji teaches it in practice not in theory so i'm resting my calf muscles i'm keeping a break you can keep even a pose sir if you want see that your head is not going upwards but downwards now this is very important i'm going to do this for 5 minutes these are conditioning exercises conditioning asanas <clears throat> yeah conditioning asanas to bring about as i said a hypometabolic conditioning so that when you go into meditation bit <clears throat> a little pranayam that precedes it you will be able to practice a complete chitta vritti nirodha this posture is important because in this posture we are able to do the fundamental pranayama which is called ujjayi every breath has three components puraka inhalation rechaka exhalation after inhalation a slight retention antar kumbhaka after exhalation longer retention bhaya kumbhaka don't start doing ujjayi right now first do shavasana the five minutes you have to do shavasana where you let the body feel the pull of gravity so if any limb were to be lifted it would resemble a dead weight in the lockdown our external world has been shut off in the rotor scale of internal external locus of control those of us who have our locus of control in the external world are in misery today but those of us who develop through meditation the locus of control to shift from the external world to the inner world that's where guru ji teaches us to know thyself like socrates guru ji always asks us to get to know thyself the saint agastin said Lord help me to know myself so that I may know you no wherein me put no wherein te beautiful it all together whichever faith expression we come from in meditation we are all one to so keep relaxing feeling 
the restiveness of the body because heavier the body, lighter the breath. Now you have to feel this. And for this, you have to disconnect. The disconnection only comes by listening to the breath. But alas, most of us suffer from what is called alexithymia. What is that? Inability to feel our emotions. And most of the addictive personalities push these traumas into the unconscious. Anger yoga has special protocols to get rid of alexithymia because there are molecules of emotion that get activated in this entire practice. And almost with having to do nothing. That's the challenge for a person whose locus of control is the shutdown world. And now it is shut down. So one does not know how to handle one's life. But the more we build up our interiority, our antaranga leading us into antaratma, all stress diminishes and resultant effect is relaxation response. And the master always calls us and says to us, come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. So feel that restedness. We have completed five minutes of Shavasana with rested calves. And now we use the same posture for pranayama. As you listen to the incoming and outgoing breath, <clears throat> without any pressure, already the breath has slowed down. Use every breath from its inception to its completion. In a continuous uninterrupted attention. Now this is difficult. People with left brain domination can never listen to their breath. If you're too preoccupied mentally, if you're disturbed emotionally, and uh, if you have a psychiatric disorder, you cannot do pranaya. But don't get discouraged. All of us have all these components. And all of them thinking, they're emotionally sometimes upset, and none of us are, are normal. If not, not having psychosis, we are all neurotics in some way. And therefore, sanity comes when you are able to come into the here and now, to the antaranga. Antaranga has two components, pranayam and pratyaha. So let's do this basic pranayama. As you breathe in and as you breathe out, if you are not able to stay with your attention on the breath, then use the Father Anthony de Mello's formula. He would say, use your left brain to shut it off and give the right brain the ability to listen. So say to yourself, now I'm breathing in. Say it mentally and do it. Now I'm breathing out. Whatever way you do it, be with your breath. Puraka dovetails into the Rechaka. 
Ve chakra dovetails into the Pura. You have to do nothing. You have to only listen. The Guruji says, attention is love. Never get discouraged. Keep coming back. We are all with you. The collective consciousness helps us in our practice. So we have practiced Ujjayi Pranayam in a relaxation posture. From this, we now try to understand what is the consequence of listening to the breath, Pranayam, Pratyahar. The best translation of Pratyahara is a disposition of dispossession. Letting go. We let go of our body, we feel rested. We let go of our breath, we get in touch with an infinite reservoir of stillness within us. We look at all our possessions and we say to ourselves, I am not my body, I am not my breath, I am not my possessions, I am not my ailment. I am not my attachments. I am not my addiction. Because I am who I am, so aham, tatvam asi. And in that, you begin to realize what Hubbard Benson calls the second stage of healing. The first stage is bringing ourselves to be completely rested. The second stage is remembered wellness. Beautiful. Mother Teresa said, it's not our love for God, but God's love for us. So remembered wellness, beginning to see that deep down, we are well, we are all right. We are blessed. Let that blessing, a sense of wellness, percolate into every cell in the, in the body. And the third component 
of healing according to the Harvard physician is the faith factor. Having rested, come to rest in this, having felt loved, remembered wellness, scientists today say that this takes you into the faith factor, that all shall be well. And all manner of things shall be well. Mystic Dunyana of knowledge. This wellness continues. God is a faithful person. Faithfully, we may be unfaithful. God is faithful. And what he has begun in us God brings to fruition. If we are in this condition of Ishvara Pranidhana, Ishvara Pranidhana is the same as the 12th step program, third step, making my will and my life over to the God of my understanding. That brings us the practice of dharana, dhyana, to be able to experience samadhi. Dr. Sinzen Nihalvi describes samadhi as a flow experience. The continuum of life, one extreme is stress. Because we feel inadequate by the challenges facing us. But the other end of the continuum of life is boredom. All my addicts suffer from boredom. So qualified, so talented, but no opportunity to use. They get bored and go on to drugs and alcohol. Dr. Sindhan Nihalvi says, yoga and meditation brings us into that Temporary Samadhi. Tato Dvandvana Abhigata. The opposites don't matter. You praise me, thank you. You insult me, thank you. That state is brought about by what is going to follow now called meditation. For meditation, you can choose a posture that will keep your body alert. It's essential that you keep your spine alert. It should be, there should be a sense of restiveness in the spine and yet alertness. So people generally always like to sit cross-legged you can even lie down in the position in which we were for meditation. This is going to be today. I will keep it only for 15 minutes. In the week, we will keep it for 20 minutes. Uh, so now we have come to a moment where we are going to practice meditation. There were Restedness in the body, freedom in the breath, quietude in the brain. Initially, we begin by just listening to the breath. But then, for dharana, you have to use another sensory object, which is sensory uh, capacity, which is the sound. The sound has to be internal. So right up from the fourth century, John Cassian, who said, don't use too many words, but just one word. The author of the uh, cloud of the unknowing, one word, 
which word mantra in india you all have definitely you all have your own mantra the world community for christian meditation of which the dalai lama also is part and uh, we uh, we we recommend a word called it's an aramaic word maranatha come lord hari om is very popular a four syllable word is even better narayana whichever word you take it's not important no reflections at all this is only the sound so you have to hear the sound of the mantra you blend it with your breath excellent you will get distracted don't worry keep returning back to the word that brings about dharana and takes us into a state of oneness there are two schools of meditation some say hold on to the mantra others recommend don't be surprised if you go beyond the mantra into total silence for 10 minutes from now keeping yourself in a position that keeps the spine alert keeps the breath free and keeps your attention on the word a short introductory prayer heavenly father divine mother open our hearts to the silent presence of your spirit lead us into that mysterious silence where your love is revealed to all who call hari om narayana allah shalom maranatha
has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first morning. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the world. Sweet the rain's fusion, sunlit from heaven. Like the first dewfall on the first ground. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet are. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden saw play. Grace with elation, grace every morning. God's recreation of the new day. Morning has broken like the first morning, blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the world. Thank you, Father. That was wonderful to have Cat Stevens singing <laughs> His Morning Has Broken. The last time I remember you sang it was in a lagoon in Kerala when we were dreaming about the future. And this song and your inspiration and your sonorous voice is something that we can never forget. Thank you for bringing that this morning. And I think we all need it. We need a fresh new morning. We need a uh, the morning has broken in this COVID crisis uh, with the pandemic for all of us and uh, it will bring us great rest and relaxation.